girl and me know that our love will last forever. My girl and me know that we two belong together. But sometimes it seems I shatter our dreams with some careless word of foolish lies. Five ninety on the clock, Gav. Five ninety? I know, shocking price, isn't it? It wouldn't have been if you'd spared us the guided tour of London. <laughs> I understand it. My mate swore it was a shortcut. How could it be a shortcut? We went around some Paul's twice. Five, 50, <laughs> five, seventy, eighty, ninety. No tip. Yes, for future reference, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. <laughs> We're back. Fred, in, Dad. There's huh? masses of mail, though. Oh, let me just save it the last few seconds of our holiday. And don't tell me about anything in a buff envelope. <laughs> well, that rules out the gas, the phone, the electricity bill, the water rate, and there's three letters from the income tax. Oh, thank you very much, Sam. Here, push over, fat sir. <laughs> yeah? No wonder Maddie isn't here. Look at this postcard she sent. Where is she? The Brandenburg Gate, West Berlin. Well, what's she doing there? Dad, she's married. What? Maddie? Married? <laughs> Hello? Oh, no. Oh, bother. I meant to be here to welcome you home. <laughs> Hello, Simon. Hi, Graham. Hello, darling. Hey, now, did you know Maddie? She's got married. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Huh? My word. Where did he come from? <laughs> Dad won him at the fun fair, throwing ping pong balls. Well done, Simon. There's nothing to it, Nell. It's all done with a little twist of the wrist and the 20 quid I spent on ping pong balls. <laughs> About Maddie then, huh? Well, you know how she went home with her father, mm. determined not to marry the chap she was promised to. Yeah, she told me he was a half-witted gorilla. Well, it seems she's fonder of dumb animals than she thought. <laughs> it was love at second sight, apparently. And as his regiment was being posted to Germany, they got a special license. Well, she sent me the same postcard. Mm. And a letter about her replacement. A replacement? possible replacement. Maddie felt so badly about leaving her in the lurch that she spoke to a cousin of hers at the wedding, a Miss uh, Isabel McCluskey. She's arriving tomorrow on the Glasgow afternoon coach. Yes, but supposing she's not suitable? Well, she'll simply return again on the Glasgow evening coach. Oh. <laughs> Maddie enclosed a photograph of the girl. Mm. At first, I couldn't understand why she was wearing a space helmet. Uh, no, no, it's not a space helmet. Somebody's drawn a circle around her head. <laughs> I realise that now. It was Maddie, so we'd know which one she was. But there's no one else in the picture. Typical Maddie. <laughs> she was a smashing housekeeper, and I'm really going to miss her. Ah, oh, we'll all miss her. Ah, oh, it's all so sudden. Mm. I'm afraid it only confirms my view that love is exactly like measles. Measles? The older you are, the worse you get it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably want to give her a wedding present yourself, but I did send off a little something from the office if you want to chip in. What was it? Something for the kitchen. Right. A smashing little veg slicer. It's got suction thing on the bottom to hold it steady and everything. It's not a mini marble veggie shred, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Terrific little gadget. I know, I gave you one for Christmas. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, but this isn't the same one that you gave us. <laughs> It is. I'm sorry, it's just that Muriel could never get it to work. All she's got to do is wind around the handle. I know, but she's not really mechanically minded. <laughs> Much prefers to just hack away at things with a naked blade. I mean, she wades into a sink full of potatoes like something out of the Seven Samurai. <laughs> right, well, I'm off to meet the Glasgow coach. Thanks, Liz. Right here, Mr. Harrop. If this uh, new girl doesn't work out, I think I may have a solution. 
Hmm? There's this Norwegian au pair that's next door, and she's really... I mean, she's... Oh, God, she's, she's just, she's just... Uh, Derek, perhaps you'd better sit down for this Yes, bit, yes, I think... <laughs> I mean, I mean she, she's blonde, beautiful, very slim, and at the same time, she's really... <laughs> Expert on the accordion. <laughs> Anyway, when I left home this morning, she was emptying rubbish in her dressing gown. Funny place to empty no. rubbish in. <laughs> looking very unhappy, so I said, Hello, Inga, what's the trouble? Oh, Mr. Yeats. <laughs> and so sad that Mrs. Wilmot not want to be no more. So back I go to Norway at the end of the week. <laughs> See what I mean? Hello. <laughs> Going back to Norway, she could look after you and Sam, but especially you. Is she any good? I told you she's fantastic. No, I she's mean, clean. I'm talking about her domestic talent. Does she cook? Does she clean? Who cares? <laughs> You've got that key on her. Why did you hire her yourself? No, Muriel doesn't need anyone to do the housework. She's got me. <laughs> Much better if you hire her, then I could come round and visit. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm off to meet Miss McCluskey. And don't forget, if she can't cook, I'll come round and make you one of my fantastic curries. One mouthful and you feel your brain start sizzling behind your eyeballs. <laughs> that hot, is it? Yeah, it cleans out all your physical impurities. Sort of like an edible diner rod. Right. <laughs> 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 in you come, Isabel. Thank you. Uh, uh, shall I take a coat? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Isabel, my daughter, Samantha. Hi. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Pleased to meet you. Hi. Uh, shall I take the cardigan for you? Oh, no, please don't trouble, Mr. Harrop. I'll just wear it if you don't mind. Thank you. <laughs> Made some tea. Great, unless, of course, you'd like to clean up first. Well, yes, of course, Mr. Harrop. What would you like me to clean up first? <laughs> uh, if you'd like to freshen up after your journey. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> The loo's the first door on the left at the top of the stairs. Oh, I'm all right at the moment, thank you very much. There was a toilet on the bus. <laughs> right, take a chair. Thank you. Dad, she's got a cardigan on inside out. I know. <laughs> uh, Isabel, if you'd like to sit on the chair. Oh, the thank you. <laughs> How'd you take your tea? Yes, please, thank you. <laughs> no, no, Isabel, how? How do you take it? Oh, sorry. Um, milk, please, and three sugars. Oh, three. Two, if you like. No, 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 you said three. <laughs> no, two, fine. No, 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 you want three sugars? You can have three sugars. No, yeah, absolutely right, Mr. Harrop. Three's too many. No, I didn't say three was too many. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. Thank you. Give her three sugars. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> Just don't mention it, all right? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> don't mention it, all right? Have the tea. Thank you. All right. Uh, would you like some cake? Uh, no, thank you. Are you sure? Him. Give us some cake. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. So then, uh, how was your coach trip? Oh. It's all right, don't choke yourself, Isabel. <laughs> you enjoy your cake. Well, I was sick twice. Sure, you wouldn't like to freshen up? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> well, maybe just a little bit. All right, Sam, show where it is, will you please? No, please, don't bother. I'll find it. Um, uh, up the stairs? First on the left. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm sorry. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> oh, eh. Uh... Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, excuse me? Yes, of course. Yes. It's a lovely room. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. What do you think? What do you think, I think? She's a loony, right? Right. <laughs> so, maybe she's suffering from jet lag. You can't get jet lag on a bus. <laughs> Well, maybe she's quiet, but really efficient. Efficient? She can't even wear a cardigan properly. <laughs> no, if we can have somebody living in with us, we want somebody with a bit of life. Life? You know, a bit of fun, a bit of oomph. Oomph? <laughs> 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 
I've got to give her a chance, Well, of Dan. course I will, but I made jolly sure I know the times of the coaches back to Glasgow. Well, here we are again. Uh, All good friends and jolly good company, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, it's not right you waiting on me, so I'll just, um, you show me the kitchen and I'll get right down to it. Down to what? Down to anything you like. It for a start. <laughs> Why don't I clear away the tea things? Yeah. No, actually, no, we haven't actually finished yet, she said. <laughs> no, no, of course not. It's just my bit of funny. <laughs> Now I'm here, why don't I put more hot water in the teapot? Well, if you really want to. Oh, I do, Mr. Harrop, I really do. You see, I'm only happy when I'm working. That's when I'm full of uh, fun and life and uh, things. Yeah. Well, the kitchen. Oh, uh, please don't disturb yourself, Miss Harrop. I'm sure I can find it without troubling you. After all, I'm here to make life easier for you, so uh, just sit back and relax. <laughs> Sit back and relax. <laughs> I found the kitchen. Good. But where do you keep your dustpan and brush? My girl and me. Me and my girl, we call each other. Evening, Mr. Harrop. Ah, good evening, uh, Isabel. No, it's my briefcase I'm looking for. Oh, under the table by the window, Mr. Harrop. <laughs> now go on, after you. Go on. <laughs> Isabel, where's my newspaper? In the magazine rack, Mr. Harrop. It's like living with a poltergeist. <laughs> hi, Dad. Oh, uh, hi. Oh, at least she hasn't tried to tidy you up too much. Yeah. No, but she's had a go at my room. Mm. Oh, she's braver than I thought. Everything's tidied away out of sight. When I first walked in, I thought I'd moved. Yeah, I think she was raised in the wild by a family of squirrels. No, it's because she lives with her six brothers and sisters in three tiny rooms. And she said if you don't tidy things away, things are either tripped over, sat on or nicked. <laughs> if you'd like to be seated, I'll bring you your tea. All right, thanks, Isabel. Hey, can you smell burning? <laughs> again. What do you mean, again? <laughs> she's not used to our cooker, Dad. I think she's having trouble with our bread knife as well. <laughs> This is one of my specialities. Oh, well, that's uh, fantastic. Dad thought he smelled burning again. Oh, yes, but not to worry. It wasn't food this time. Oh, good. What was it? Oh, it's not important. No harm done. No, no. What was it burning this time? Well, you see, I'm not used to gas. So when I bent to check the pilot light, well, just a wee bit of my hair went up. <laughs> The cooker's not damaged, and none of the singed ends went into the frying pan. <laughs> this is a great favourite with my brothers. It's sausage, chips, bacon, fried bread, fried egg, and the sausages in batter. Uh, aren't you eating with us? No. I've had a little trouble with your washing machine, so I've got to get rid of the water. Oh, I'll show you how it works. No, don't worry, Mr. Harrop. I found how to open the door. No, no, Isabel. <laughs> If you open the door, all the water will pour all over the kitchen floor, you see. I know. That's the wee bit of trouble. <laughs> Sorry to be unsympathetic, Simon, but the arrangement was if she wasn't suitable, she was to return home on the next bus. I know, but Sam said it was only fair to keep it till the end of the week, providing I live that long. <laughs> yeah, well, some people take a while to settle in. I mean, when I first started here, I couldn't spell or do dictation or even work the coffee machine. You still can't spell or do dictation. <laughs> yeah, but I make great coffee. <laughs> then why not go and mix up? Yes, Mrs. Cressler. 
If we can come back to Isabel's cooking for a moment... I don't see why not. It keeps coming back to me. <laughs> what precisely is the matter with it? Everything is swimming in cooking fat. Honestly, I've seen drier oil slicks. <laughs> but can we just carry on with the meeting, please? If you're so certain it's not going to work, shouldn't you tell her straight away, rather than let her work on to no purpose? Perhaps so, but she's so anxious to make her mark. Honestly, it's pathetic. She was up till after midnight ironing last night. <laughs> Is that one of the shirts she ironed? Yes, yes, I think so. And she certainly has made her mark. What? What? <laughs> Afternoon, Miss Harrop. Sam, what's the matter? Please, Isabel. Miss Harrop makes me feel ancient. Yes, of course. Sorry. You, uh, haven't sprayed polish on the fruit again, have you? <laughs> yeah, I'm still embarrassed about that. You see, we only have fruit in the house when people are ill. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to pop out and post these cards. Do you think the man at the shoe shop at the end of the road will mend the catch on my suitcase? Oh, why are you uh, thinking of going back to Scotland? Oh, no. Well, at least I hope not. I mean, no money up there, no work, no room. If I went back now, it'd cause a lot of sleeping problems. Why is that? The day I left, they sold my bed. <laughs> ah, where's Isabel? Upstairs. Right. Isabel, can I have a word with you, please? Not back early. It's no good, Sam. I'm going to have to tell Isabel it's just not going to work. Oh, but, Dad, the week isn't up yet. No, I should give her two weeks' wages and then Uncle Derek can take her to the coach station. It's going to come as a terrible shock to her. She thinks she's made a really good impression. You should see the impression she made on my silk shirt. <laughs> Listen, before you say anything to her, yeah. this is the postcard that she wrote home. The Harrops are lovely people. I got off to a sticky start, but they're both very kind and patient, and I'm trying as hard as I can to please them. I can't come home to face the unemployment and no money and sleeping on the floor because you sold my bed. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about unemployment or selling her bed. No, but that's all she's got to go back to. I'm sorry we're not a charity, Sam. She doesn't want charity, just kindness and patience. I'm sorry, I've just got to be ruthless, Sam. Did you want me, Mr. Harrop? Ah, yes. Yes, Isabel, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you that... Uh, well, unfortunately... Yes, Mr. Harrop? You dropped your postcard. <laughs> you don't need to buy a new stamp. Oh, I think I've got a couple in my wallet. Oh, that's very kind, Mr. Harrop. And then I'll be home to make your tea. Liver and onions. Fried liver and onions. That's right. I can't wait. <laughs> Dad, yeah. I love you when you're ruthless. <laughs> Isabel, I'm Mr. Yates. Simon's asked me to take you to the coach station. I'm sorry? Yes, I'm sure you must be. But I hope he's given you a decent reference. He's given me the sack. Yes, I know. But at least you've got two weeks' wages to go home with. No. Didn't he give you anything? Just two first-class stamps. <laughs> Stingy swine. You wait here. I'll make sure you don't go home empty-handed. Simon? Oh, Derek, change of, change of plan. And you have the nerve to say that I'm mean. Well, you are mean. Two measly stamps you give her. <laughs> well, that's what I had in my wallet. <laughs> well, you could have written her a cheque, couldn't you? What, for postcards? <laughs> and what about a reference? What reference? Precisely any normal employer would have given her one. Derek, what exactly are we talking Sending about? Sending her off with no money and no references. She's only gone to post some cards she's written. Well, in that case, she must have written thousands if she needs a suitcase to carry them in. Take her suitcase to the menders. Dad decided to keep her on for a bit. Yes, I didn't mention the word sacking. Mind you, I suppose I'd better say something to her. Uh, no, uh, I shouldn't bother. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've just done it for you. What? Well, I saw her coming out with a suitcase, so I'm Oh, actually... never mind. Sorry. Isabel, there's been a big mistake. Quite all right, Mr. Harrop. You can tell me when I get back from the Menders. Oh. Well, you won't take me back to the Menders. Uh, you're quite right to get rid of me, Mr. Harrop. I, I told Maddie I was a trained housekeeper, but the only job I ever had was in a shirt factory. Obviously not in the ironing department. <laughs> that closed down three years ago. I was just so desperate for a job. Isabel, you've still got a job, providing you improve. 
Oh, I'm improving all the time, Mr. Harrop. From now on, then, when I'm frying, I'll use nothing but unsaturated poly oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, come down and we'll discuss it. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Harrop, I don't deserve this. <laughs> no, I know you don't now. <laughs> go to your room. Wise move, Simon. Oh, really? Yes, you know that au pair I was mentioning the other day? Inga? Yes, well, she left the Wilmot home late last night, taking a souvenir with her. What, the family silver? No, Mr. Wilmot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye, Uncle Derek. Cheers, Sam. You know, it's incredible. That weedy, balding, middle-aged, paunchy estate agent has thrown everything away. His business, his friends, his family, and for the sake of what? A few furtive months with a 19-year-old Norwegian flesh pot. God, how I envy him. <laughs> what are you going to say to her when she comes down? Well, she's having cookery lessons for a start. <laughs> and she's got to promise not to tidy up my room more than once or twice a year. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, she said she's going to use unsaturated poly oil. <laughs> of course. It's the latest thing. Poly oil? Yes. It's what you get when you melt a parrot. <laughs>